Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we have some more news, which is why I'm back in the white void with the weird blue light. I know, I, I can't explain it either. It's YouTube, this is how it's done now, apparently. Alright, so anyway, we have plenty of news for not only Warhammer 3, but Warhammer 2. In this video, we're going to go over the Warhammer 2 news, and that's actually the one I'm most excited about, because that is uh, more inevitable. And so, we got a teaser trailer, so uh, do the thing. Osh Yotl and Torox, the Brass Bull, are the two uh, two creatures featured there in that trailer. That's the versus pack that we're going to get in the Silence and the Fury, which is very, very cool. So, as you can see, as, you know, uh, um, connoisseurs of Warhammer will be able to tell you. Um, Oxyotl is a chameleon skink, so we're going to get a chameleon skink lord, which is kind of cool. So we'll have a, a stealth um, focused Lord, which is interesting. So, you know, sort of uh, uh, stalk and snipe, presumably. Um, probably a bit like a short range Alithanar, which makes me wonder how he'll stack up, because that means you're putting your ranged Lord in a lot of danger if you have to go close to things. So it's going to be an interesting, um, interesting to see how they deal with that. But he does have a habit of being able to just sort of slip away completely, so I wonder if he'll have some sort of um, uh, smoke bomb disappearing act going on. I think that could be quite cool. And uh, Torox, the Brass Bull, just absolute uh, wrecking ball of a creature. So the stories between both of these, um, I think, could lead to some interesting sort of narrative overlap. So Oxyotl, his whole thing is that he was actually present um, in, uh, in Parhawks for the initial Chaos Invasion. So he's old, right? But not necessarily aged. So the weird thing with him is that during that battle, um, a, a rift sort of opened and um, tore reality a new one and all of the defenders of Parhawks got sucked into the realm of chaos. Um, the Slan got eaten uh, by demons uh, it went very badly for them and uh, yeah, Oxyotl managed to escape into the realm of chaos. So he's running around the realm of chaos for who knows how long um, but he's back, he managed to escape and him returning was actually sort of seen as an omen of uh, the terror that is to come, you know, for the for the end times or whatever, um, you know, not the end times event narratively, but just you know, the, they're always talking about how the end times is coming. That's kind of the theme. The end times is coming. Everyone collect the models because only they can stop it or start it or whatever. You know, that's Warhammer. But uh, yeah, he's back. Um, he found his way back, and he won't tell anyone how which I think is probably the writer's way of avoiding having to tell people how you get in and out of the realm of chaos, because by nature it's supposed to be abstract. So um, anyway, he escaped uh, into, into reality, which is kind of awesome. And uh, he knows um, a lot more than most people do. He knows how to get around. Um, he has these secret sanctums, and he's, he's got these... Um, he knows a lot. He, he knows a lot. But the Slan don't even know it. They won't read his mind for fear of basically the... the, the potential taint of chaos that's within him to spread to them. So they're just leaving him alone and they see him as a bit of a portent of doom, but also he's really bloody useful. So he's collected a bunch of other comedian skinks um, behind his banner and has been just cleaning house, killing demons. Um, he's even killed a greater demon of Zinch, him and his him and his boys. So kind of a big deal. Like he's he's pretty good. His ambush tactics apparently are working. And uh, he really dislikes chaos, so 
that's a good thing, that's a good asset. But of course, Torox is a creature of chaos. So Torox, his whole thing is that he was a bloodthirsty uh, warlord, essentially. He was in charge of a particular um, sort of uh, herd of, of minotaurs. And anytime anyone would look at him wrong, or at all, he would kill them. He would just butcher them, right? So bloodthirsty. No one could step out of line so much as look at him. Um, and so that's kind of ridiculous. So anyway, bloodthirsty dude. Chaos took an interest in that, obviously. And he got sent uh, an emissary, right? His One of his rivals that he'd just murdered. Uh, out of his corpse came this weird chaos monster thing, right? Just this weird mutant creature of tentacles and wiggly bits and nonsense. Um, you know, chaos. Chaos stuff. Chaos nonsense. And so Torox, um, you know, this thing appeared. Rather than questioning that, he noticed that the thing was looking at him. So, of course, he ate it. So, bit its head off, munched it down, yum yum, lovely chaos thing. And uh, that was bad, because it was made out of chaos um, um, nonsense. And that basically amplified his rage to a ridiculous extent, and he went on, like, a several month um, uh, murder rampage, fueled by this, this chaos nonsense. So, um, yeah, it kind of went a bit nuts. But at the end of that, um, he'd butchered an entire town, caused a river of blood, because, you know, standard, standard Warhammer motif. And, uh, and Chaos basically were like, okay, yeah, we like this guy. He killed our emissary, but, like, we thought he was interesting before he went on the six month. Um, I think it's six month, a year, maybe. Whatever. It was ludicrous time. Like, way too long to be awake. Like, he needed, he really should have had a break. Um, but anyway, snapping point was basically at, at this, uh, butchering this town. And finally, you know, woke up, drank from this river of blood uh, that he'd created, and that reinvigorated him with chaos nonsense, and now he's got brass skin for reasons. So he's basically blessed by chaos um, because of his crazy murder rampage. And so he's just a crazy murder rampager, which is um, kind of awesome because you basically now have a guy who never stops moving or rampaging and is an agent of chaos, and you have a guy that hates chaos and loves ambushing. So, uh, sorry, I just realised I'm flipping you off, sorry. Um, yeah, amazing. So, really cool idea of having, you know, the, the, the guy who won't stop moving and the guy who will take that, um, you know, sort of uh, to his advantage. Which I think is interesting. So, we've got a cool couple of characters here, uh, for sure. So, I do have also uh, some text from the Steam page so we can talk about their campaign mechanics, which should be fun. So, let's get into that, shall we? So if I look squinty, it's because I'm squinting. Maybe I'll show you some pictures or something. I don't know. Here's a picture. Enjoy it. So, uh, Total War Warhammer 2, The Silence and the Fury. This Lord's Pack for Total War Warhammer 2 introduces two new legendary lords with the Lizardmen and the Beastmen. Each leads their own faction and features new characters, units, unique gameplay mechanics and narrative objectives. Formed of living bronze, the rage-filled Doombull Torox is nigh on invincible, save for one area on his gargantuan neck. The Chaos Gods whisper to him of a ritual which can eliminate this weakness, but the promises of the ruinous powers are seldom what they seem. Meanwhile, Oxyotl, the revered chameleon skink and master of stealth, scents the machinations of Chaos and rallies his cohorts. Torox must be stopped at all costs, lest a new tide of Chaos sweeps the world. When the silence meets the fury in a final confrontation, who will prevail? Dun dun dun! So, Tordox, after embarking on a bloody rampage through Talabekland, it was Talabekland who's rampaging through. I, I forgot to mention that. It was Talabekland. Lots of trees and, you know, beastmen love it there. Nice. Lots of places to run around and, and scrape, your, scrape your horns on, you know, the bark of trees. And I don't know what beastmen do. Murder, mostly. So Torox was rewarded by the Dark Gods with the body of brass. And still he thirsts for slaughter. As he wins, Torox gains momentum. And his army can replenish action points to fight and fight again. The longer his kill streak continues, the greater the gifts bestowed upon him by the ruinous powers. He and his beastmen hordes will ultimately need to locate the Heart of Darkness, where he will face Oxyotl in a final decisive battle. So, a lot of cool stuff there. Um, with, with Torok. So, the momentum mechanic, that's straight out of Three Kingdoms from uh, uh, Lear Boo's uh, campaign mechanics. So, you earn a resource and you can spend that to give yourself movement back, which is really cool. So, on the campaign map, attack someone, go, hooray, we won! That guy's slightly out of range. No, he's not. Spend some momentum, go fight him too. And uh, you can just keep going, which is awesome. So, I love that idea. 
for Todox, because he's he's the whole point of him is he's an unstoppable brute, right? He just keeps going. There's no stopping him. Um, and so the idea of the bloodlust fueling him, you know, the sort of the the gore um, that he, you know, the carnage he causes is what fuels him to continue, which uh, I think is wonderful. I think that's a really cool idea to have that sort of reflect in the campaign mechanics. And of course, the campaign mechanics will inevitably be reworked because the Beastmen should be getting a rework with this DLC, because that's the trend, right? Um, this is an old world faction that is in desperate need of reworking, and we're getting a DLC with uh, with one of their lords in it. So we should, should be getting a rework there. So I wonder how, um, sort of how unique he'll be compared to the other the other lords, you know, what is gonna be the core Beastmen um, mechanics now? I have no idea. I wonder how that'll change, because, yeah, this could be a totally unique campaign, you know, from, uh, from someone who's not, um, uh, someone who's used to playing Beastmen, as they are, you know. So not only the momentum thing, but everything else that we're going to get too, which I can't wait to find out what that's going to be. Obviously, they're not going to mention that in, uh, in, in this page here, but uh, soon, hopefully, we'll hear about that. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Also, the Heart of Darkness. Um, I'm not entirely sure what, it, what that is, but clearly that's the place that he's going to. That's where Chaos is saying, you need to go here, mate. So I wonder what that'll be. Um, obviously, the, the, you know, the machinations of Chaos are never never clear so perhaps it's a trap maybe they're trying to get him into an area that has been you know sort of magically um set up to harness his power maybe maybe the free lc lord that we get uh, with it along with this dlc could be could be the thing pulling the strings and trying to get him there so they can absorb the power that he's that he's uh, garnered you know because thing maybe maybe the blessing isn't actually to make him powerful it's so he can keep going on this murder rampage so that someone else can you know, eventually sort of um, uh, uh, harvest that crop, you know? Who knows? Who knows? I'm just speculating. But that's a very warhammer thing to do. And I think that ties in well with sort of Total War Warhammer sort of themes and things they've done so far. So I'm interested. I'm interested in that for sure. But then we have Oxyotl. So a chameleon skink of hired renown, Oxyotl has a long history of fighting and succeeding against the otherworldly forces of chaos. His prescience enables him to detect where the forces of chaos will strike next, and utilizing the network of lost secret sanctums across the world only he can capture and develop. Oxyotl can choose which threats to tackle and reap the rewards of victory. Oxyotl can instantly travel between his capital, his unique mission areas, and any secret sanctums he has discovered. Ultimately, he must travel to the Heart of Darkness and face the hordes of Torox in a final desperate battle. And uh, it also says to keep your eyes peeled for more information on the rest of the roster in July. Because, of course, this isn't out until mid-July. This is the earliest we've had um, sort of... Uh, news of a, of a DLC. Uh, they never announce it, certainly, but it's the Skulls event, you know? So, um, that's a thing, you know? Just makes sense to, to sort of say what the next thing is going to be uh, in this sort of big event. So, yeah, I think this is awesome. I think it's some really cool stuff with uh, Oxyotl here. So, he has his he has unique settlements, maybe? These Sanctums? So, he'll be able to sort of teleport around the map, presumably. Um, which I think the Wood Elves, uh, their rework was a good warm-up act for that. Um, being able to sort of transport units like that. So... That's super cool, so I'm, I'm super looking forward to that. So a very mobile um, force that can sort of zip around and set up ambushes in various places, and then someone who is just going to be running around, um, traveling great distances, but just by sheer stamina. So I think it's really cool. Two incredibly mobile and, uh, and unique uh, forces here. So I can't wait. I can't wait for these. These are super exciting, you know, things to hear about. And, of course, it just means Beastmen hopefully get their rework before Warhammer 3, so we'll have some more sort of interesting, um, sort of chaos-adjacent factions. Because chaos is great and everything. We get all the demons in Warhammer 3, uh, which is cool, but... That's not just chaos, really, is it? Demons aren't all of chaos. It's all the other stuff as well that makes, uh, sort of makes chaos interesting. So, you know, the beast herds running around in the forest, the chaos cults and, you know, Norska constantly raiding and pillaging, you know, being sort of corrupted with their close proximity to the chaos wastes. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff um, around uh, chaos and the chaos wastes and, you know, how they manipulate the world and how they impact it. And Beastman is a huge part of that. And so for them to be fleshed out, sort of before we get all the demons and everything, I think it's going to be really cool. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so that about... Uh, oh, no, it doesn't do it. I have a couple of screenshots too. So this first screenshot of Oxyotl, or also maybe Oshlotl. I've been looking at the pronunciation guide, and I'm not entirely sure, but the census, you know, the consensus seems to be um, Oxyotl, though I don't really trust the consensus most of the time with, with 
pronunciations. Um, so I should Lizardman pronunciations. Everyone always seems to get it wrong, but maybe Osh Oshlotl, uh, Oshiotl rather. Uh, but Oxyotl will do for now. So anyway, uh, yeah, this guy. So we can see he does have unique skins in the background, um, which is cool. But like, it's just gonna be more chameleon skinks. Um, although these guys do appear to be a little more sturdy looking. They do look more um, brawny, I suppose. So I do wonder, I do wonder if these are gonna be like a more melee focused uh, unit or a better sort of hybrid infantry. Because just standard chameleon skinks, they're already like the elite skirmishers. You already have skink skirmishers, then you have chameleon skinks, and now we have better chameleon skinks. That seems like a boring trajectory just to be slightly better you know, each time. So I assume these guys will have a different use. I'm just not sure what that's going to be. Uh, could be anti-large. Could be, because that is something that would be a big gap. Like a huge gap um, in, in the roster for uh, someone focusing on chameleon skinks. I mean, sure, you can just shoot them a billion times. You know, large units. But I think maybe something with anti-large or, um, I don't know, some damage over time effects. You know, like the, like the Death Glow Bombardiers and stuff have got now. Maybe something like that. I don't know. I really have no idea. I struggle to think what would really set them apart from other chameleon skinks, but uh, these are clearly other chameleon skinks, so I'm interested to find out. I think it could be an interesting niche, and if it means we can have a more interesting ambush army, I think that's really cool, and will also be the bane of the multiplayer servers forever um, <laughs> from this period on. So, you know, that'll be fun. So enjoy that. Um, and also we have this second screenshot of Torox and his boys. So as you can see with this one, Again, those same skinks running around, those chameleon skinks with the awesome headdresses. I do like that. I do like that a lot. But um, yeah, Torox, on his uh, on his flanks here, you can see he is escorted by Bestigors. But these Bestigors have great weapons. So, possible hint that we're going to get a uh, new weapon variant. I'm assuming those aren't just the um, uh, Korox Man Rippers, you know, Regiment Renown. Um, I'm assuming that's a generic um, sort of Bestigor with great weapon unit. Um, which is interesting. That's a nice thing to fill out in the roster. But, of course, they aren't showing us most of the roster um, for now. I'm sure they're keeping all the big scary things, um, all the cool stuff, sort of uh, in the chamber for now. Which, of course, they would, wouldn't they? It's, it's so far away from release right now. And the Beastmen have got some awesome, like, nuts units that they could add. I mean, they could add the Gorgon or the Jabba Slythe or like countless other just like crazy weird monsters that they could drag up from, uh, you know, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay or, you know, Forge World or whatever. These men do have some crazy monsters because it's just all like mutant stuff. It's sort of in their domain, you know, all just crazy, horrible monsters in the forest. Just everything that your, your parents warn you about when staying out late at night. That's the Beastman. So who knows? Who knows what they'll do? Um, who knows what we'll have? Hopefully, all of it. <laughs> Hopefully all the big monsters. That's what I want. So anyway, um, so yeah, that'll do for this then. Um, that'll do for this reveal. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. I'm certainly intrigued to know what they're going to be doing. Um, very intrigued. Very intrigued to hear more. I hate that it's so long away. That's part of my gripe with Warhammer 3. All the, all the news about Warhammer 3. I just want to play it. You know, it's just, I know it's supposed to tease us, but I feel teased. I don't like to be teased. I want to play it. Um, <laughs> it's the same thing here. So far from release. Um, oh, it's frustrating. I just want to play it. So that's a good sign, though. It means it's working. So, guys, uh, yeah, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, also, um, it might be up for pre-order on, on the Nexus uh, store. So if you go to uh, nexus.gg slash Janet, you might be able to pre-order it from my store and it'll give me a cut. If it's not available yet, then close to release, certainly, because all of the Total War stuff does end up on there. Um, even though they have been a bit, um, Nexus has been a bit funny with me lately. Grr. Anyway, hopefully with this one. So uh, it helps channel out a lot and just gives you a Steam key. So, you know, it's all good. So yeah, uh, that'll do. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Um, remember to uh, wash the carpets. They're getting dirty. Good day.